Who is on upset watch? This lower third might be my favorite that we have ever had. If you're watching live on YouTube, little, little shark fin action, courtesy of the man myth, the legend Nick Brake. Treat this segment just like if there were a shark in the water. It doesn't guarantee a shark attack. It doesn't. It doesn't mean, oh, okay, you can't swim. I would advise against swimming, and I would understand there is definitely a shark right there, and bad things could happen, but we're not calling our shot. We're not predicting it. In one of these games, we already have predicted an upset, and we'll mention it when we get there. But I'm just saying now, the comment section, if you want if you want to experience real-life toxic in your life, go check the comment section to this video because it's going to be a lot of folks that haven't watched the video and telling you that we called an upset against X, Y, and Z team. It's not always the case. Again, this is just upset watch. Not a prediction, just upset watch for us all to be on the same page for as we jump into week one. College football fans, week one is here. Lock in. Major weekend ahead of us. We appreciate y'all for being dialed in and being subscribed. This week, with it being week one, um, not maybe as uh, as full of an upset slate as maybe we'll get in other weeks. Got a little three-piece special for you this week. Extra sauce. And it starts tonight. If you're watching this after Thursday, well, then this game has already happened. Colorado, minus nine and a half against North Dakota State. We've already done a prediction video, which is separate on the On3 YouTube channel. Wasn't a part of a live show, so go check it out on the On3 YouTube channel. We think Colorado wins this football game. However, the potential for upset is very much there because Colorado, man, I was talking with a buddy yesterday about this. It was like, dog, why, do you, why if you're an FBS Power 4 team, do you schedule one of the best teams in FCS for your opener? Just a lose-lose. Because for Colorado, if you win this game, you were supposed to win this game. If you lose this game, man, I can't believe you lost to an FCS team. Like North Dakota State is very much so playing with house money. They have the second best odds in all of America to win the national championship for FCS. So just because they don't have that FBS sticker on their helmet does not mean they're not a really good team. This is by no stretch of the imagination a layup. The path we see to an upset here, it exists. North Dakota State averaged over 200 yards on the ground last year, y'all. Uh, very, very evidently, the issue for Colorado defensively is stopping the run, among other, among other things. Uh, they revamped that front seven. Still, though, they allowed 170, 175 yards on the ground a game last year, did Colorado. I love Shador Sanders. I love Travis Hunter. I love Jimmy Horn. I love all the offensive pieces throwing the football downfield for Colorado. But if you're having to watch the better part of that second quarter because they're just putting together a 14-play drive and you got to watch that thing if you're Shador Sanders... That minimizes the impact they can have. The test here, I think, is going to be really interesting for the way that Colorado approaches this game. Because Colorado, fair or not, has developed this reputation of, well, what's their culture like internally? Well, are they a team that plays for clicks, like some folks have mentioned? Is that the reality? I'm not telling you it is or isn't. But I am saying in this game, if you don't have your head on straight and you don't take this game seriously and you kind of sleepwalk through the first quarter, you're going to get beat. Like, North Dakota State is not to be truffled with, to quote Michael Scott. So, North Dakota State, it would not shock us if they pulled off the upset. But again, we have Colorado winning the football game, and we will uh, stand on business there. Now, West Virginia, Penn State. Penn State is favored by eight and a half. They got to go to Morgantown. We already called our shot here. We think this is an upset. We think West Virginia does beat Penn State. It's in Morgantown. Pat McAfee's on campus on Friday. That place will be absolutely berserk. I think they've already like put out some different notices, changing like class schedules or traffic rules because of what they're expecting with how wild that atmosphere is going to be from Friday going into Saturday. It's a noon kick, sleepy noon kick for Penn State. You got to walk out there. Two new coordinators. Last year, this game, even though the final score was very decisively Penn State, that was not how the game went. It was 14-7 midway through the third quarter for Penn State. And then they kind of got some mojo and found a way to pull away there in the third and fourth quarter. But at the end of the day, man, like this, this was a close one. The difference for Penn State last year was they found some explosivity offensively. The man who generated that is gone. Keandre Lambert-Smith had two touchdowns over 100 yards in this game a season ago. Uh, one, that was at Penn State. Two, he's at Auburn now. So with it being on the road, with the new coordinators, with all the clunkiness, again, we think West Virginia pulls off this upset. A lot of experience back for West Virginia on the offensive side of the football. I believe they have seven starters back. Mobile quarterback in Garrett Green. Always a nice little uh, little upset seasoning to put on there, sprinkle on there. 
West Virginia also finished the year pretty hot, won five of the last six. So we think Country Roads is blaring after this game. This is not just an upset watch, but an upset pick for us. Give us the Mountaineers over the Nittany Lions, and uh, that'll be a noon kick. So if that happens, we'll know very early in the college football Saturday, and we will uh, have a good time talking about that going forward. Boston College at Florida State is a Monday game. The beautiful part about week one now, you get a little, uh, little Monday action. Florida State is favored by 16 and a half. I'm assuming that number would have even been, been greater before week zero. Florida State won this game by two last year. Final score was 31-29 Florida State. Thomas Castellanos is a name that very few folks in the college football world know. He's the quarterback for Boston College. He had a road to glory kind of game last year against the Knolls. Now, granted, that one was at Boston College. This one will be in Tallahassee. But my guy went for 300 yards passing and darn near 100 yards rushing. We don't think this upset happens. However, I think this is one to just keep an eye on. Because remember, too, last year it was Duke and Clemson, and I guess that game was at Duke. But still, that was the Monday night game, and we're all kind of talking about, yeah, I guess I guess Duke could pull it off, good quarterback. I'm just saying. If, if correlation has anything to do with causation, uh, that's one to watch. That's one to watch. Also, Florida State, if they don't figure it out up front on both sides of the football, you put more on DJU's play, and if that kind of has some hiccups again, I'm just saying. I am just saying. Keep an eye on that one. So, three-piece upset watch. One of those we're calling out right, West Virginia over Penn State, but Colorado, North Dakota State tonight. We think Colorado wins, but still a good litmus test. Something to see there. We think Florida State beats Boston College, but even with that being said, that's uh, that's one I'd watch closely, and I would consider consider now uh, potentially taking BC to cover that one. Just a thought. Bill O'Brien and the boys rolling into Tallahassee. Should be a good time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.